Welcome back to the Student Starcraft AI tournament. We have got for you a beautiful game, and it is between uh, a bot called uh, Awesome Bot, which I assume speaks for itself, and uh, Daydoes. Or Day Does. I don't know, does Daydoes? Uh, let's call it Daydoes. Daydoes doesn't sound really all that interesting. Daydoes. And uh, these are both bots from the Danish Technical University, or as I had dubbed them in a previous video, the Dark Templar University. For obvious reasons, we have got four entrants, which I am told will represent four teams of students working uh, towards a project for some kind of credits on the Dark Templar University in Denmark. And um, well, I'm happy to say that the Dark Templar <laughs> um, quote has been reduced, so let's go and find out what's going on. Having sped up the entirety of the early game before any conflict aside from some cannon shots fired towards the zealot, uh, we've now got a, a nice choke detection, so this is of course the only point of entry for the enemy, and then with two cannons that will be increasingly hard to get this ramp, especially if you augment that defense by a couple of zealots, so terrain detection is improving. For uh, Daedas, and Daedas um, well, used to be Coco Butts, but that um, I presume that the professor had something to say against that, uh, or they uh, thought it rather immature themselves, and they changed it. So um, Daedas going for a nice, looks like Dark Templar build of one gate, uh, two gate, second gate coming, but with a couple of cannons at the ramp, and the uh, awesome bot has only gotten up to the point of doing a three gate with gas so uh, if you look at the gas we've got 600 gas and nothing much happening with that and now the zealots appear to be going for the ramp um, the other zealots of uh, datas aren't really going to defend but we've got dark templars coming two of them and the attacking of awesome bot is not really up to snuff with the cannon support i think that these zealots can hold it and Awesome Bard sounds the retreat. Now, um, of course we've got DTs in, in the air, but um, obviously that <laughs> Awesome Bard, or the coders of Awesome Bard, don't know anything about that. Only now going for a cyber core, but with two Dark Templar out, and I assume there can only be more on the way. That's a nice setup, because you can move out, and you can't really move in, and you, you'll be catching a lot of fire on the ramp. So, very nice defensive setup by uh, Daedas, and Daedas dishing out the damage with the Dark Templars. Three kills in one, and zero in the other. But, of course, I think that these Zealots will have some kills in one as well. Four kills, and um, we got two more Dark Templar coming, one over here, and one there. And another cannon. While, oh, should be careful not to block it off completely, but of course, the Dark Templars are small units, so they probably be able to find a way through the pylons and, and cannons anyway. Um, awesome bot on the other hand is going for way too many gates and has no detection whatsoever. Once you have two DTs in your probe line, the numbers are decreasing rapidly. We've got 19, 18. And uh, that seems to be the game. So um, that is really nice for a, a project on Drupal AI. I can only encourage other universities to do the same. Okay, now we've got goons, but goons, alas, also can't see. Dark Templars, nice timing of the, of the wave, so they all start simultaneously, oh, except for this one. Um, but, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Gets cornered and trapped, and Daedas does it with the Dark Templars for Dark Templar University. So, um, going to call the GG, good game for uh, Daedas. And also, bought, well, nice try, but you, um, if you are from the Dark Templar University, you should have some uh, some kind of detection, really. Okay, and on the other hand, we've got Jacob Knudsen, and Jacob is uh, one of the team members, also from a team from the Danish Technical University, has been on the Student Starcraft AI tournament server for a little while, so perhaps either he is... He's got its initial build done very quickly, or he just uh, was in a quicker time frame than the others. And of course, it's playing Protoss. And I have heard from um, one of the guys from Casper from the DTU that uh, the professor said, 
Well, pick Protoss because it is the easiest race, so now we've got scientific proof for that as well. Uh, of course, I don't know his uh, Brute War credentials, but <laughs> I think that um, we now have got a scientific reference for Protoss being the easiest race. And on the other hand, we've got um, Aurélien Lermont. Um, I, um, I should really try and pronounce that on an, in an English way sometimes, but I, c I can't really do it. Breaks my heart. It's from, Fran uh, from France and has uh, been upgrading his bot for quite a bit, but um, still does the, the wildly all over the map expansion with a random attack unit movement and some very interesting AI um, algorithms for determining where and how to strike, so that's um, interesting. Of course, Jacob Knudsen uh, being Protoss going for the 2-gate, but this 2-gate could have been a little bit more aggressive because as you can see there is nothing here and only now a couple of links get made, so uh, these zealots could have done more had they not been parked at the top left of the base. Meanwhile, lots of money being stacked, I think perhaps this might be for an expansion because it can't really spend all the money with the probes we've got. Uh, we've got my probes and the rest of the zealots, that's a wacky two gate. Now, Garnbot, as uh, the bot of Aurélien Lermont is called, is going for Zerglings, but um, okay, that was my Russian friend's accent, I'm not going to get into that. And here is a um, well, rather unfortunate second place, but now only gets into the action, but falls onto it for Zealots, perhaps. No, he's not going to it. Oh, okay, well, kills are one, but there are a couple more. And uh, Garnbot seems to be able to um, have to retreat to this base, <laughs> immediately more from the lair for some reason, more than two lairs have not enough units. So build order wise is very heavy on the tech and nothing on the units, but there are a couple of Zerglings in the main base already, and <laughs> all the probes die because apparently there were no, never more than four uh, nine probes. Quite a bit of money stacked, but I think that if this goes down and that goes down, uh, we've got quite a bit of zealot. So if they find this expansion before anything more happens, I think this is going to be a boo. Will it be a boo? Perhaps? I don't know. Or, oh no, it's trying to take another base, so that's really, really something. So we've got two gates, quite a bit of money in the bank, but of course supply blocked. And uh, Ling streaming into the main base. These zealots not really doing anything other than supervising the uh, reduction of the creep and standing in the shade of these overlords. While Garmo takes another base and is, or should be, going for a spawning pool so it can produce some units to kill off these last remaining buildings and this handful of 11 zealots. We have to speed it up just a tiny little bit because, as you can see, nothing much is happening. Gas being taken. Creep colony is going to morph into a. Da -da 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 sunken colonies someday. Oh, wait and see. And as you can see, Garbot taking his time. Twelve, um, twelve drones. Oh, that was, was that? No, that's a zone. I thought for a moment that was a, um, a, a, a muter. But now we've got, oh, one died already. So we've got ten zealots and ten zealots against a bot with Oh, unless of course this <laughs> this one zergling tears down the base by itself. But these zerglings have a bit of problems with these mm, hacky minerals. Of course, I should explain how that works because this was made for pro play to uh, have something to be somewhat safe from from run bys. But um, later on, you could mine them out so you'd have earlier uh, better access to this base but um, AIs don't really recognize this because it doesn't somehow show up on uh, the blizzard pathfinding thing. So how this works is that these bots communicate by um, to com communicate with the game through the Brute War API and then they uh, give commands to the game itself. So there is some script, an algorithm whatever is coding this Zergen to say, well, go here. No, you can't. Oh, I can't. I can't? Well, then I go back. But these commands are executed by the Blizzard uh, Root War engine. <laughs> and how many Zealots have we got? So the Zealots have been left unharmed. It's going to the buildings. Good choice. But the pathfinding does get uh, messed up. 
So uh, coders are encouraged to build their own pathfinding uh, solutions and not to solely rely on the Blizzard pathfinding stuff. So, um, well, that was a pity. A uh, nice bit of uh, two gatery, but that didn't really work. I'm uh, interested to see what kind of um, things these these coders wanted to to code because, um, well, this kind of uh, build you can easily take from. Oh well, let's start with this one. Um, you can take University of Alberta bot and tell it to do that, and it will do that, and you'd be set and done within a day or so. So I don't really know what the um, the idea of that course was at the Danish Technical University, but so far so good. Perhaps a um, more ambitious project will be started over time and we'll uh, hear from them again. It's always good to have another university doing brute war AI stuff. And of course, don't forget, it's pretty hard to, to code something by your own. So if they had started these uh, AIs from scratch, I think that within um, the confines of a university course, doing a two-gate bot with finding the enemy and trying to kill it is pretty good. Uh, depending on the level, of course, but it's not really as easy as it seems. Then again, if you start with an example bot or University of Alberta Opera bot, or you take one of the... Uh, well, all the bots are open source, probably. Most of them are. Some of them may not be as well documented, but if you took um, a bot like Skynet, which, has, which hasn't been updated in a couple of years, and made some modifications to that, you'd be a hell of a lot better off, time and result-wise, probably. Okay, so uh, what have we here? We have got Crazio, ta -da -da -da, as the White Terran, and Crazio is, uh, well, working steadily on his bot, has been uh, trying to deal with um, early aggression, and, well, the good thing in this game would be that TSC New Terran does not go for early aggression, but uh, Crazio has also been trying to update his game because his bot was a little bit um, defensive, sitting back on two bases, macroing up to 150 supply and then do a push. Very good push, very good defenses, but if you uh, sit back for 20 minutes and let the other player take the map, usually you're in a bit of a problem, so that's not really how it's supposed to be done anymore in this day and age. But TSMU uh, claims he has been working on <laughs> um, neural networks, and that's always very interesting. He's, uh, he's been uh, training his bot versus um, well other bots using a very large, um, a very large corpus of, of enemies. So uh, he'll train them, and then he'll train his bot, and then release it on the on our server. But uh, he says, well, it's also very slow, although he has been using the AWS um, services from Amazon to buy some more computing power and <laughs> speed it up a little bit. I said, well, you should do a blog on this or do a dual cast with me. He said, nah, I don't really want to do that. I just want to want to play around, make a mess of it. And that's all good and fine and is um, perfectly brilliant by its own right, but I can't really see what's going on at the backside of this with neural networks, even if I did understand it. But I, the only thing I can see is uh, the, the bot playing, and it's supposed to be getting better. So that is uh, what it's all about. So we, we can only see the output of that strategy to work with neural nets. And I said, well, what, what can I? Uh, what should I look for? What what does your do your bot do better than it did before? And he said, well, he's just win. And I said, well, okay, we'll try and watch for that. So I uh, picked a couple of games uh, with other bots which got updated and uh, tried to find out what's going on. Of course, um, this is not really good because the Vulture now can't exit the base. And I don't think, oh, I don't know if that is governed by neural nets, but now it moves out of the way and it moves out of the way in such a way that, oh, one Vulture can get out, the other one seems to be bugged out. Uh, this marine is really not doing a good job of uh, controlling access to the base because you should let your own units out and not let anything else in. Crazio, meanwhile, has gotten his bunker up, has got the, the command center up nearly to TSMU going for. Well, this is very old school. This is just a one base. It looks like one of these, these 2013 one base hybrid mech bio one base play Terrence, which um, 
were quite prolific, but of course, in uh, with the onset of the big macro bots like Icebot, Skynet, Crazio, and uh, obviously for getting a couple sim, of course, and we should have. Um, of course, there are the newer bots over the last couple of years, but uh, the one base hybrid plays from Terran have been uh, not as effective as they used to be for quite some time now. TSMU now going for a very late command center, going for vulture speed, going for more vultures, taking the map. And as you look at what Crazio at this moment can see, it's just this. Has scouted the enemy base, doesn't show up here for some reason, but uh, I don't know. Only scouted the enemy base, got lucky, and then retreated behind a bunker. Pushing eco and pushing uh, siege tanks. So that's very good if you can get away with it. Of course, if you don't get away with it, you get punished very badly because at this point you've got 35 SEVs and about 6 worth of army supplies, 6 supply worth of army supply. That's not at all good. If you look at these red dots and TSMU is appropriately red, is it's all over the map. And now laying mines at all the expansion, this SEV is scouting out as well. Natural coming up supply wise, Crazio is still behind, and I, I wonder how it does that. Because that's really something, of course, that's in the infrastructure, it's got more factories and uh, got more tech out. But supply wise, TSU moves do pretty well, and I have been told that the build orders are being generated by the neural net, so he trained them, he says, with a, a sort of outcome that he'd like, and then the, um, the neural nets determine what thing to build when, and when to attack or when to defend. And yesterday TSMO told me, well, he had been working on a siege tank micro, so they won't siege and siege all the time and die needlessly. And by the looks of it, I think that it is working so far, because that's a nice defensive line, even some on the high ground. Although they are sieging, unsieging somewhat due to this um, this vulture moving in and out, as you can see, supply-wise, pretty even. And the turret, so that's pretty good. Have we got an academy? No, we should see some comsets relatively soon. Nice defense in the mineral line, and one here as well. And nice bit of turrets. And if you are wondering why, ooh, that is some nice shootage by uh, Crazio. Many kills on these tanks already, and that's the reason why Crazio is still doing relatively well in the supply department. <laughs> Look at this, all vultures, how many vultures have we got? TS Moona, Rocky, 14 vultures, 2 tanks, 1 marine, 1 goliath, and 3 wraiths. And of course, Crazio scans for wraiths, and if he detects some kind of a star port or um, stargate or anything else, a spire or a, a lair, he'll try to. Uh, make wraiths, or um, you know, if he scouts wraiths, he'll build turrets all over the place. And I think they have been more abundant than before, so that has been tweaked over here for some more. <laughs> Look at that, all the tanks. So Crazio still walling behind a bunker, just getting massive units out. Um, here comes da -da -da -dum, the drop and it's going the right way. No turrets here, no defense for TSMU, so perhaps these four Goliaths can do quite some damage. Meanwhile, TSMU taking a third, or no, that's not a fourth, that's just a clump of vultures, and taking a third and a fourth. Meanwhile, got five wraiths out, doesn't really find a point to attack, or thinks it's, well, perhaps safer to uh, not attack. Got quite the number, and here come the Goliaths. Have got some kills between them, but in the end, I think the vultures are too many. And if you look at the, the quantities of units, we've got two wraiths. I think a couple of them have been killed. Oh, crazy! Now pushing. That's an interesting place to take a third, but of course you can do some fighting along the way. Perhaps it's going to be a total loss, but of course you'll be um, at the mercy of these vultures, and they do quite a little bit of damage. But here come the tanks, so um, you need some, some Goliath coverage before, but before a wraith covers it. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Apparently these vultures think that the uh, buildings can be damaged by spider mines, so finding up that stuff. Crazy now taking the map, as you can see, every base but, oh, this one and this one, because there are islands, have been mined up, and this was apparently the last base which hasn't been mined up, so Crazy would 
um, try and go for that one. And now trying to take this base by building the command center a little bit next to that. And ooh, SCV gets shut down. If you look at the supplies, TSM is pulling ahead. It's all over the place. Nice control on the battlefield. Not really making any push. Not claiming any terrain. Just mining up. And Crazio has got an impressive tank position, but I think that TSU has got its number. We've got a science vessel overhead, we've got two science vessels now, three wraiths. Could have been done with a little bit more wraiths because you could easily clean up this entire segment of siege tanks. If you um, compare it to human play, where, where you occasionally get a Mars wraith switch and then get 30 wraiths or something, and 30 wraiths would breeze through this in about 30 seconds before any Goliath could be summoned. Crazy going for the all-out defense of two base and... Well, it could be a strategy, but of course with the... Uh, oh, nice Matrix matrix Vulture, that's very impressive. Tanks doing a lot of damage, killing mines, killing Vultures, and this tank is now going to get into a range of things. Ooh, Wraith is... And as you can see, not really much is getting shot, so that's good. But in the end, oh, that's nice. That's um, it's a colossal concave because these these units have been told, well, keep your keep your distance from tanks and stuff. So they tend to make uh, to form these incredible arcs around any tank positions. Now we've got two wraiths in here, and of course they haven't got the the, the weapons upgrade, so they do eight uh, air to ground damage. It's going to take forever, but Crazio hasn't got anything to. Um, Break out of there, main mind out, natural mind out, TLC move going. Or you can probably imagine how this would be going, right? Going to speed it up just a tad because this is really all about. And I'm interested to see how TLC move is going to take on this fortified position because Crazy at this moment has got six wraiths, a lot of siege tanks with light cover. Um, it's going to be a, a nightmare to break into this. Of course, the natural will soon be mined out, and Crazio won't ever be able to max again, so everything he loses will be lost forever and never to be replaced. And now TSM moving in, this tank taking a lot of fire without really being able to fire itself. Well, there it goes, and there goes an irradiated SCV of that city. The wraiths are okay, they're just nipping away at these siege tanks, and the vultures moving into range, getting blasted. But Every shot the uh, Crazio takes at this moment is going to be um, going to have to be replaced, and as you can see, the minerals are out and the gas is down as well. So that's not really going to work. Um, and Tiosimu is not really interested in attacking the soft rear, but just ooh, the, oh, that is a nice, a nice train. But of course, there is a vulture out there. And uh, what are they doing? That's the entire SCV supply of Crazio. That's 40. Three SCVs, 42, because one remained behind. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Oh god! All these, yeah, it's like a um, a car pun in feeding time. It's crazy, I'm moving out a little bit, but I can't really see how this is going to work. They're just going to get absorbed in TSC massive map control. If you look at the map, this right ring, bright ring of red around the units, from time to time, a small incursion. Crazio at 66 supply, mind you, that's all army supply because all the SCVs just got butchered. Now with the raids, and they look really impressive. That um, should be said because these raids and tanks it's, it's look like a, a very nice army position. But in the end, TSM is all over the place and just going to wreck stuff. So, this is the last stand of the Custer's little Crazio tank army with a bit of raid cover and a couple of Goliaths. But in the end, used to be 66, now 60 supply. It's never really taking the fight, only taking all. Oh, it's like a, a bunch of wolves, a pack of wolves, just picking up stray tanks or firing shots at stray wraiths. And in the end, just trying to do to, to, to damage where it hurts now with nine wraiths and this turret and Goliath are doing way too much damage. Got five science vessels. Potentially a lot of matrixes and Crazio is slowly but surely dying out. TSC will meanwhile taking the entire map, not taking island maps, that's some functionality that, um, as far as I know, no 
bot as of yet has. This one Wraith now doing lots of damage on its own with 3-3 three, three upgrades to Wraith. Um, yeah, there we go. So, uh, GG. Crazio working hard, but uh, emphasis should be placed on taking the third and fourth base because you're going to get out. Mm, yeah, let's take this one. Out Mac Road anyway. So, um, that said, TSMU said, well, uh, have a replay I, I took from my, my practice server because my. Um, uh, my Zerg. This is. Uh, this is TSCMU Zerg, of course, should be TSCMU Z, but on his own practice server it's just called TSCMU. And the TSCMU Terran is called TSCMU T, nothing to worry about. This is TSCMU, I'm wrestling himself. And he said, well, because um, the students, uh, our, our server where we play all our games has got some memory, it's very hard to uh, reset that, so I did that on my, my home server. And let's see what's going on. So, um, quick look. Really greedy expansion, so we've got three bases already, a oh, third being taken, but um, with a very low SUV uh, drone saturation, we've got 17 drones. On the other end, we've got 22 SUVs, 10 marines, and this appears to be a bio versus, um, we are soon going to see what play. And TSU going for lots of marines, and now a little bit of nothing. So more marines coming up, stim coming up, uh, medics will soon be built, I presume. So we've got a, a stim bio force, um, we've got lair coming, we've got a hatchery coming, hydra speed, and is this going to be... You can't really be... Um, you can't really mean that. Hydra play with hydra speed and... is a valid build versus... Uh, Bio play of Terran. Okay, we've got Lurk, so that uh, might make more sense. Meanwhile, we've got nine Hydras versus 70 Marines, three Medics, and a turret. So, nice defensive position by TSC Moon Terran. And I can't really say that I know that how this, mira this Terran has been trained. Of course, the Zerg does not have yet, as I think, got the neural net training capabilities, but the Terran has. And this is a Bio Wraith play of two bases without any pressure. TSC Muzer could have taken a lot more bases but is now at 34 drones versus 49. Who on earth makes 50 SCVs of two bases? That's crazy. <laughs> so, um, and more blades coming up. So, this appears to really be a bio with Wraith play for some reason. Um, this SCV is not going to live very long. There it goes, and TSC Zerg just pressing H4 Hydra. It's got the Lurker aspect and now working on the Hydra range. Of course, it's a bit strapped for money, so you can't really build all that much units. Uh, should have taken taken one more base, perhaps, but here we go. All keeping their distance, and that's what I like about TSC Mu. It's got such good um, perception of where the enemy is and what it does that it can always uh, move in, move out. And this, this still marine force versus the Hydras. Of course, the Marines are dying, but cost wise, it's the Hydras which. Oh, well, if these. Where's the rest of the army? What the bloody are you doing? And leave this handful of Marines to fight this huge Hydra army by itself because we've got 29, 30 Hydras versus less Marines and we've got even, we've even got Lurkers coming. So that's not going to go well. On the other end we've got uh, a couple of more Wraiths popping up and a lot of tech so I don't really know what's going on. This is a two base bio play versus a Hydra Lurker. Oh well. I, I, rem I recall saying that Hydra Lurker would be an interesting build to play, but of course if these... I don't know if that's what's going on. So more upgrades coming. I think that they... oh, they haven't got 1-1 one even yet, so that's the 1-1 one one for, for Zerg coming. Terran, of course, has got the plus 1 and is should be working on the... should not be... should be working on the plus 1 armor but of a two base and more wraiths coming. Okay, so conflict again. We've got a lurker, 
not really doing much. Uh, the army movement of these uh, bio units is not really that great. Behind this, either player could have taken a lot of bases. TSM with Terran now taking a third. Could have taken taken a lot of bases. And well, this is a bit of a, a difficult thing to do for bots to, to fly out a drone halves that because you you can't really do that with um, heuristics. You need specific code for that. And look at that, we've got how many lurkers? We've got eight lurkers, four more to come, and uh, this is looking like a really nice play of a Hydra lurker, but uh, should be careful not to go overboard on the Hydras, and meanwhile taking more drones. No defense at all here, so, oh, there we go. A couple of marines will shut this down easily, and then the main army will have to be moved to try and defend. Because these um, Stim 1 1 Marines will do an absolute load of damage against these drones. Oh, and the medic is moving out, and the drones managed to kill off one SCV. And now, as you can see, a small group of the army is coming up, and another group is coming, trying to push up here. And the Marines are just going to give up the ground and take more bases behind that. Marines now fleeing from this lurker, and the lurker just reset. Oh, yeah, they have no, they haven't been found, and they're moving out. They have forgotten that there are two marines here, with, which could do more damage to the drones. And now, supply-wise, TSM Terran is about 40 up. Um, now adding adding the vessels, we've got two vessels already, so every time you irradiate a lurker that's a net gain for Terran, especially if you are on four versus three bases. And I really wonder why the Zerg isn't really taking any more bases, because that is something you'd expect it to do. And also losing a lot of overlords to... Oh, that, oh, that is ugly. That is really ugly. Look at all the damage being done by one irradiated lurker. That's not good. Uh, perhaps do some provide a little strip to either kill off these uh, irradiated units or kill them. A nice concave by the Terran now with plus two weapons. And if there aren't any lurkers in the vicinity, they can just butcher all these hydras. And TSM is uh, trying to, to sustain the push, but there are too many Terran units. Look at that. It's almost like watching an ant colony defend itself, but if you can imagine an ant colony with medics, that's something very, very scary indeed. Lurker's getting something, getting a kill here and there, and it's only to be hoped that there are a lot of lurkers that they won't be able to push these uh, marines back into the base, because uh, then they will be cut up like herrings in a ton with a fish barrel shotgun tank thingy. Um, and there's some really nice play by TSM Zerg just inching its way in on these uh, these bio units. Occasionally they'll, they'll try and go for a lurker kill and then they'll, they'll use a couple of marines, but I think in the end... Oh no, 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 you can't be serious, you need a low. Oh, if these lurkers had been here you could have pushed them all right into the, the main base, but now Zerg is expanding. Yeah, that's very good, we've got one. Oh, one base operational already. One, two, three more bases coming. And perhaps that could be qualified as a net victory, even if you didn't push all these Marines back to base. Supply wise, TSU, Terran just 40 supply up still, but uh, lost the base. And as the main is mining out, the natural's getting low. Uh, the third is somewhat exposed. And this base in the middle is under attack by a lurker already, although it's messing around a little bit. Now with the Lings, I think that this Zerg is a nightmare to uh, <laughs> to fight now because it's very strong, and especially with a, a bio force. All these lurkers, they they just take a couple of units, and oh dear, oh dear, oh dear! You either need a lot of scans or very good uh, vessel cover. But now this this group of high uh, lurkers seems to be trapped, and there are Marines who slip through the defenses. So that's very good couple of SCVs trying to long distance mine, but now TSU and Zerg has got three more bases and it's got one, two enemy bases to compete with because you really need good map control and awareness to, to keep a base like this. Really. In the main base, da da da, defiler mound, ultra cavern, we've got a hive of course, and upgrades coming in left, right and center. <laughs> Look at all these hatcheries, that is crazy. 
That is really crazy because of one, two, three, four, five, six bases, a Zerg of six bases is really going to turn on the thumb screws and do a lot of damage. These um, Q units, oh, these links just, just go for it, man. Just, oh, the, they are losing so much. Look at it, six kills. Six kills, and I don't want to know how much. Oh, that's. And TSMU turn has been able to take this base because these Zerg forces are just so bad at taking large scale engagement. That's really something that's bothering me about TSMU. It can harass you to death, and with in near infinite APM, it's supporting 4.5k uh, APM on the Zerg part and almost 8 on the Terran. It can do that, but. It's really bad at taking large-scale engagement, especially compared to human play, but even in AI versus AI. And TSMU Terran appears to be, on the other hand, now almost 60 supply ahead. And these Zerg units are just dying all over the place. That's just not good. Not good. Should be harassing bases and taking... Cast a... Oh, damn you. It's not the... Oh, it's not finished yet. And where... Oh, it, it died. The fighter died before consume was finished. You could say, well, with 10 marine, ten lings, we could take down all these marines easy, but the bloody morons don't do it. And only now they're taken down, losing a lot in the process. That's not good. And, oh, that's a nice local position with a couple of high risk of water the rates. But they should. Oh, they're just mulling about, Dave. Yeah, there we go. Now with the swarms, that's very good. But uh, they uh, lost the base there. It's about to lose a base here. So Terran is going very, very well. And the Wraiths are doing some damage. Yeah, you're not going to stop those with Ultras and things. Although one Wraith thinks it's a bit scary and moves off. But <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, in the end, Terran just taking the map. Now Max. Look at the money stacks already. Taking bases. Mining up stuff. Killing things. And going for the drones first, and that's it, because these 3-3 three, three marines really need good uh, defensive and offensive scripts for uh, Zerg to be able to deal with that. Because if you bury a couple of lurkers, cast a swarm, cast a plague, you could round it up easily, but that's very hard to do for an AI. And if I were to see this as a, as a human player, a Terran with so many... So many bases... <laughs> Uh, yeah, you need a, you you need a bit of anti-air, my man, because you've got uh, ultras, defilers, and zerglings and overlords, but with about six wraiths, out, <laughs> that's not going to do much. And crazily enough, where we uh, why? Okay, there's some interesting building placement. What have we got here? Another command center. Perhaps it doesn't really recognize this as one mineral patch, and it's trying to uh, mine it from three sides. Always good. And this one Ultra is running to and from these two Vultures, which are a lot faster. And gets a nib in there, because the Vulture is now getting cornered, and the Ultra will cap. No, it will get away, and it will die. Oh, it takes the Marine with it. But <laughs> these two Vultures just out micro an Ultra, that's crazy. And of course, the entire army just moves out as one to kill all the single, uh, single there. And, ooh, got a couple of Scourge now, and a Plague on the Wraith. But, um, no, the Wraiths defend well against these uh, small numbers of Scourge. And then go back to uh, killing, uh, bothering, really, Ultras, Drones, and stuff. So, yeah, that's that. Going to speed it up just a little bit, because uh, all that's left for turn is now to take the natural defenses, and as everything is lined out nearly with the Wraiths overhead, that's that. GG. Okay, and I've got the last test for TSMU Terran, because that's the big news of always, because TSMU appears to be working on his bot as much as the entire Brood War AI community put together on the other side. Uh, we've got TSMU Terran, da -da, and this is from the Student Starcraft AI Tournament server. And we've got Iron Boss. And Iron, uh, well, Igor Dimitrievich from France has been working very hard as well. And I'd be interested to see how it goes now because it has. Iron has been the most harassy bot of the year so far, even worse than TSE Moo, any race. And it's just been uh, crazy to see it grow and add more functionality while 
increasing in obnoxiousness and just being more of a pest in general. TSMU going for the same very fast only on one marine nice bit of defense here and I am not really having any of it but that's some nice defense of course again yep now the vulture moves out oh and now we are in uh, some uh, hot vulture on vulture action uh, we've got two three four iron and we've got three four TSU and now it will all be down to micro all be down to micro and I think that iron is going to get the better end of the early stick TSU with the defender's advantage but I think that uh, no, not really much damage done at all. These two vultures being caught, and they they flee, so they don't do any damage at all. And that's something I think that could be improved upon, just to um, estimate. Well, am I going to get cornered, or am I going to to outright lose this vulture and operate in 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 tight formation? Because if you've got five vultures, you can take on an incoming trickle of vultures nearly indefinitely but now this one is running away these one these two are pursuing and it's just one big bloody mess but in the end TSU is losing out as expressed by the supplies I am nine supply up already and the build is oh that's um, explainable that way going for the mines and have we got any going for speed so speed and rates so this is a bit of a mirror build, a Wraith a Vulture battle for, for map dominance and it looks like Ironbot is getting the better of it in the early stages. Last TSMU is all over the map but the units are just too split up and dwindling in numbers so uh, that's not good. As you can see now Vultures in the main base they will just be repelled, I think, by the wraiths. We've got one and one, but this one is taking a little bit of damage from the one marine TSU has got. And TSU is just about able to hold the main base. And of course, well, although there's a little bit of damage done, I think it will need a very good plan to be able to only now finishing finishing vulture speed. Building more wraiths, of course. Iron has got two already repairing its wraith on the spot. And uh, this wraith doing a lot of damage to the ground units. Two, two wraiths, and now you could push it back, but iron is pushing hard. And if you are containing TSC Moo Terran um, with harassment, that is, uh, then you're doing something right because you are being very, very aggressive. Now, starting with the other base, building a turret so the main base can't be harassed, mining up bases. And TSU just dropped some, some random mines here and there. Ooh, that's a nice skip. And likewise, TSU has caught up. Now with the extra base, a little bit earlier in action, I think it's been able to push back the, the attackers by, by virtue of uh, having more defenses concentrated at the main base. And Iron hasn't recognized it, so TSU pulling a little bit ahead for now. Uh, speeding up just a little tiny bit because it's not really. Oh, and TSU catching a wraith, that's always nice. Uh, one more wraith here. Could it be killed? I don't know because where are the wraiths? They are hovering over the, the command center for some reason. <laughs> While they could have done so much damage here. TSU now pushing back the enemy while being bothered by a single or a dual wraith. And TSC Moves Wraiths are over the command center. I don't know what's up with that, really. Because these vultures could have done so much better if they hadn't been bothered by these two Wraiths and if you could have killed a couple of vultures as well. So TSC Moo not really doing himself a favor here. Uh, let's see what tech is coming up. We've got more Wraith. We've got a factory. We've got siege mode coming. Have we got siege mode at this end? No, I don't think that Iron hasn't got any plans to um, take to Siege Tech yet. More turrets has got no turrets on this end. And the wraiths are up here. And where are TSC News wraiths? They are now in the middle of the map. But now there are... Oh, look at that. The, the wraith micro of TSC News is just so much better. And we've got four wraiths now, while Iron has got only one. 
And yeah, there you go. So that's a lot of damage. Oh, that is not. That is definitely not good. You don't really want to let vultures into your base, God's sake. And then, oh, that is a pity. Siege tank popping out at the right time, but then blocking the, the ramp. That's not good at all. And <laughs> these wraiths are buzzing around so much they can't really be effectively repaired by these uh, these SCVs. <laughs> There, there seems to be some kind of an approximation uh, script between wraiths and SCVs, but it could be optimized a little bit further because it just looks very funny. Well, it's very effective though, but it looks... Okay, well it's effective so it doesn't need to be optimized, sorry. Uh, going for style points only later. Now, TSMU... A little bit... No, iron is up on the supply now. I wonder where that's at. Because TSM has got 45 wraiths and uh, SCVs, 45 SCVs, more turrets coming. And that's going to be a problem because with a, an army composed of vultures and wraiths, oh, that's it. I think that the, uh, the hard tank switch has depleted the numbers of um, the supply numbers for TSM. But with tanks and wraiths, you can defend pretty well. Of course, these vultures will try running away every chance they've got. And this one is checking out the back of the minerals. And at this point, we'll get a little bit hairy to cast this game because um, both bots will near 100 supply. And they've got the harassiest units of the game, wraiths and vultures. And they are operating independently, nearly all of them. And they've got attack and retreat movement, both of them. So that is going to be a bloody nightmare. TSM will really raising the, the rate numbers. Now it's 7 to 1 in favour of TSU new turn. But Ironbot is just a little bit up on the supply yet. Oh, we've got we've got two vultures in the mineral line of TSU new and no one dares to do anything about that. But TSU new now has got a third base up. Nearly, nearly, nearly. And I think that these tanks will have to pull off a bloody miracle because it's going to be tough resisting TSU new when he gets on one more base. So it's now 57 SCVs versus 50. SCV production increasing on the part of Iron as well because I think he is um, planning to take a third somewhere here. And now with the siege tanks and the wraiths, I think these vultures should have evolved into something because they are not really controlling anything anymore. They're just being chased away in, in, in numbers. The only thing that's uh, iron is going for itself is that there are many mines and many turrets creeping up all the way to TSC Moon's base. But I don't think that unless he takes a third very quickly, he's going to be in this game for very long because TSC Moon is keeping up with the supply, has got the better tech and has got the superior army. He's got more rates, we've got 8 versus 1. And although we've got 4 tanks on this end, we've got 4 on that end. Um, unless they, the, the, the turrets creep up really fast, the rates are going to do a lot of damage. And this tank, I think, is going to fall to this two wraith group. And where are the other wraiths? That's really the question. Oh, we've got three here defending the new base. That's perhaps you could plop down a bunker with a siege tank and a turret and have these wraiths do something constructive. And <laughs> I am now trying to, to do it with mines and tanks and creeping up with, uh, with turrets. And this wraith is just bordering the, the range of this turret. That's really insane. And the micro of TSU is just way better on the wraith. That's something that um, iron can or could work on just a little bit. The mines of iron are better though, I think. Oh, and now this wraith uh, is... No, oh, it just dies, barely, but unfortunate. Now TSU has got the three bases and... I think you could really do the static defense, just pull it off with, with depots and a turret or place one tank here. And press the oh god, these these wraiths have got some issues with turrets because they want to get in on the units and then die to turrets. And that is well that should be iron saving grace for this moment because TSU is getting out of control. Now I am taking a third base, but the main is nearly mined out. And TSU is one base up already. Is that no? That's not a silo. That's a pity. <laughs> Iron is just going to pester the hell out of TSU. That's crazy. 
and TSU is just on its harassment strategies. It's not really got a concept of, of breaking out. And look at that, all the wraiths died to two, two turrets. <laughs> That's not good at all. Perhaps TSU could build a couple of turrets of its own. Uh, it's got the minerals, it's got everything. And now Iron is catching up, and Iron, <laughs> look at all these. Iron is building turrets for sure. That's, um, you're not going to get into here with uh, harassment skills. Uh, <laughs> that was some kind of trench warfare, but I think that Iron is better at pushing than TSU moves at defending. And if you look at the supplies, TSU moves equal issue in supply while being a base up, and that is not a, um, a sign of good uh, decision making on the unit's part because there are a lot of vultures and they're just dying left, right, and center. And Iron is doing very well with the mines and uh, the turrets. Have we got no no turrets here? Now the third base is up. Main is out. Main is out. Upgrade wise, let's have a look. We've got uh, the one one four TSU. We've got the zero zero four. Oh, that's interesting. But if you look at uh, the TSU, has not really good. Uh, got a good grip on this game anymore because Iron's push is just too good. I'm just going to speed it up just a tiny little bit because uh, yeah now defending with with what the bloody with matrix SCVs and just losing stuff left right and center because iron is so good at pushing and the wraith numbers for TSU are gone they are absent they are he's now building science vessels and science vessels are all very good but they don't kill stuff especially not in a mech battle nice bit of uh, matrixing, matrixing going around and this tank is dominating this entire place and TSU can't really nip in, sacrifice a goliath and kill it because it's got nine hit points and you need to kill it now. Yeah, there it goes. So now TSU is taking a bit back, trying to take another base, the long distance mining, what the hell is that? Um, trying to keep an eye on that to see if TSU can deal with mine trick. But now TSU is moving in and supply wise it's about equal. But TSU has got better techs, got better upgrades, plus two weapons coming into effect, and iron still at zero upgrades. But with a nice defensive position that TSU doesn't really like to attack head on, he's just more of a harassment player. Iron controlling the bridge, and <laughs> this base is so vulnerable so very vulnerable and you should just take 10 units a move gone should be no problem but TSC doesn't do that it's just harassing every day and this mine is still here that's not good meanwhile TSC running around uh, circles around the other player natural's got quite a bit of juice in it left so I think that iron is in a very good position still but the supply is dwindling. It's very hard to say where this is going right or wrong for either player because it's just such a bloody mess. Uh, rate numbers. We've got three for iron and TSU will stop making them so it's got only two. And that is something that might make uh, the difference because this tank has got a good range with the wraiths and these two tanks are just at the mercy of these buggering vultures and the vultures and goliaths everywhere and I can't really see what's going on anymore. It's just a... Oh, we've got another Matrix uh, SCV and Iron now, TSU trying to take a base here but there are, of course there is still a mine, build a turret, kill it, not that hard. But of course um, needs coding. And that's another thing that I think could be improved upon because earlier we saw the DTU Protosses just trying to reinvent the wheel for the hundredth time and that's something that this me off really badly because everyone wants to build his own bot and it's just like they're not like children it's it's not really having your own child with a a man and a woman and, and doing it and the the diapers and the nappies and the it's just it's like car design where we in 2016 would say well just start with uh, making a wheel and then adding to that engine. No, you take what's out there already and improve upon that. Nobody will think any the worse for it and just take what well, TSU is, is 
is available, but it's <laughs> um, crazy. I said it was so badly documented, you might as well just start from scratch. But you've got Skynet. Skynet from Andrew Smith has been out there for donkey's years. It's one of the best designed bots, it's very well documented, it's open source, just take it, improve it, adapt it to the play of 2030, uh, 16, where are we now, it's from 2013, adapt it to modern play and rock it. Give credit to Andrew Smith for starting it out, but don't be ashamed. Ooh, that is some really awesome nasty mine explosions. Uh, but just take it, run with it, and that's how things work. That's how science works. You can't find anybody um, going back, sit in the sand with a with a little branch and do all the, the Greek mathematics again. If you want to do quantum computing, you, you just don't do that. You, you start out with what's out there and you, you improve upon that. And um, I think that people in academia should push people for uh, to um, to improve upon things and instead of starting <laughs> not a uh, matrix SCVI. I, I should ask you some what what's with that because that's just crazy. Um, but this is a really nice match. But um, TSU is almost maxed. <laughs> We've got a vulture caught here, that's unfortunate. A lot of production capacity and all of it is... No, well, it's all working, really. That's the impressive thing, it's just all working. I thought, well, with this many factories can't possibly, but there is... Compared to a human TV feed, it's just a, a money grinder. It's like 1984 with the unsinkable floating fortresses being wasted to occupy production capacity and keep everyone producing and happy. We've got Matrix Vultures and Ironbot now being pushed back, pushed back to its side of the map. This base under attack, but as you can see, we've got one turret, one Vulture and one Spider Mine. And TSC Move doesn't really dare to get in there, and that's just bollocks. Somebody should take TSC Move and uh, make some improvement. And then if you've got two people working on TSC Move, they can um, copy improvements from one each other and implement them. And that is what, <laughs> that's really nice, but you could do that with vultures or a tank or just move up there, kill it and not try to, to bother these raids while being under fire by a turret, which we can't click, uh, oh, we can't click on. <laughs> oh, and it's it's just placed on top of that, so this, this science vessel is safe because it's exactly on top of that turret. That's something which is illegal in, in the human brute war, but... I think that for Google AI, I haven't really got the, the rule books written for this level of play <laughs> and the Matrix vessel. Oh, how do you do? This base finally going down, TSMU harassing it to death, natural mining out, and the third looking like this with a clump of vultures defending its feet, and most of the turrets cleaned up, and we've got a small pocket of SUVs scouting for the artillery department. TSMU now with a 3 3. And that's it. So um, that's what I'm calling for, and perhaps one of the big, uh, big tournaments should do a, uh, a, a tournament based on well, whatever, Skynet. Just take Skynet, uh, work on it for a year or don't know how long, and see how good you can make it. Perhaps we should do something about that and just say, well. Um, this year we'll have a special competition for bots based on Skynet and whoever wins that gets a uh, pat on the back. I don't know. We don't really have cash prizes in Google AI, but uh, we, there, there are other ways to, to stimulate people to do the right thing and not mess around with these um, very basic AIs or just writing AIs from scratch. It's not really the way it's done. Nobody does that in serious academia anymore. It's just hobbyism. Okay, so TC taking stock. Six science vessels. The rate numbers are back. And now closing in on this last pocket of tank, just inching it forward inch by inch. <laughs> and Iron doesn't really have any place to go anymore. These, this tank is going down supply-wise. TSU nearly doubling it. Oh, and all the oh god, these 
I, I wonder, I, I would like to have a statistic of a number of rays of TFC movies killed by turrets of I am not, but I, it's not possible, but I would like to see that. Could be improved. So um, that was, I think, today's broadcast. A couple of new bots with updates for the project at Denmark Technical University. And, of course, the uh, onset of the neural networks in TSU Terran, which look promising, but um, also um, rather mysterious as TSU won't really write anything up about it, won't make a blog, won't do a dual cast. And so we, well, I've only got what it, what's visible at the end of it. So that's it. A closing remark for TSMU should work on a push, not really harassment, just controlling area to the siege tank push, vultures in the front, and then move the tank upwards so the vultures catch the enemy fire. We've got for a brief moment we have three matrix units. This tank is going to hate to take a hefty toll. Or is it going it's going to kill the relative? So this push is okay, so TSMU can do it, but it's rather disinclined to do so. And if you look at the map. We've got two uh, orange spots here, and the rest of it is just purple. I wonder what a, a thousand supply limit game would like look like on a 256, a 60, 56, 256 map with a lot of expansion, then just have TSU Terran play itself with the vultures with unlimited resources and just do things that would be crazy. Uh, this game is over. Uh, Igor Mitrovich for Iron. Um, looking good. The thing you should work on is upgrades, I think. The rest is pretty good and I think that today you, you really lost it on upgrades because if you've got a, a nearly maxed army versus a nearly maxed army, the upgrades are really what are what doing what are doing the, the victorying. <laughs> and of course TSMU drops to uh, the vessel use with the matrix is looking very good. Um, we'll be watching um, the development of your Terran and bring it to your Zerg approach as well because it's really uh, should be more dynamic than just hard coded stuff. And of course, it's always very interesting. You could be a little bit more efficient in the killing department, but hey, what do you know? Going to call this to GG. This was our weekly broadcast. Oh, that was a Wraith, I think. How much repairing can you do on SUV? Uh, this was the weekly broadcast. More news will come as it follows, and remember, 16th of July is the deadline for the CIG entrance. So, um, if you are going to participate, make sure you've got your best bot ready before then. I thank you very much, and um, as we say, have a nice week.